What's going on, everybody? Wyatt from JWB here, and we got some very, very important news that DeAndre Hopkins is going to be signing with the Tennessee Titans. So I just wanted to come on and do a quick video about really what that means for the Titans offense because it is a big signing and has some big ripple effects. Uh, starting off, you know, well, actually, before I even get into the players, I should say that a big part of this and looking at these players is where you're starting from. I think that it's very possible for a lot of people to come to the same conclusion, but be coming from different places to start with based on how you felt about these players before this signing. And I think that's an important part of this. So I'm going to also talk about where I had these players before the signing and how, you know, it changed them in my rankings for 2023, starting off, of course, with DeAndre Hopkins. It's going to be 31 this year, uh, which can seem like a concern, but I think DeAndre Hopkins is such an elite talent that it just really doesn't matter too much. He's at that point where until there's actually the big fall off that we see, I'm not going to count on it happening. And we have not seen any type of real fall off for him. Even last year, he was still playing pretty good. I mean, 11th and half PPR points per game. He was 17th in yards per route run, 15 in yards per team pass attempt. So still playing at a pretty high level. Um, and the big thing here for me is that DeAndre Hopkins is a huge target earner and always has been. He's had a target share over 26%, eight of his 10 seasons, and he normally is around 30%. So I expect him to come in and immediately become the top target earner in the offense. Now, before the signing, I had him as like a back end, low, like low end wide receiver too, just because the unknown of his possible situation for this year. Uh, I was not looking at that as a, as a positive. I was looking at it as a negative. I thought that it was possible he could end up going to a situation that wasn't ideal because uh, it seemed like maybe teams weren't as interested in him as we thought they would be. Now, I'm not saying that the Titans are ideal, but I think the Titans are okay just because Brian Tannehill is a capable quarterback. He's easily easily the number one option in the passing offense. So now I've got him as like a middle uh, range wide receiver too. I think fringe wide receiver one is absolutely a possibility if this offense kind of picks up a little bit compared to what it's been. But I think uh, mid-range wide receiver two, you know, is is a good ranking for him. Uh, moving on to Traylon Burks, who had a really up and down rookie season. I think there were real flashes that we saw. I think that the injuries really played a part in us not getting to see what he was really capable of. I mean, he got knocked out with a concussion in the game where he caught his first touchdown on his first catch of the game, you know, and things were really picking up for him there. So, like, I, I, I always say his rookie season was kind of like a Rorschach test. You can kind of look at it and see whatever you want to see out of it. I looked at it and thought there's a lot of promise here, uh, but there still is some reasons for concern with, you know, his prospect profile coming into the NFL was a wide receiver who needs some refining, really, but, you know, had some good physical tools and was extremely productive. So there's reason to believe that he could produce in the NFL if he was, you know, put in the right situation, coached correctly, all those things. Uh, I, I still have reason for hope with Traylon Burks, but DeAndre Hopkins being there uh, pushes him down to being the number two option in the passing game on the offense in my mind, and that's a problem. Uh, part of the reason why we had a lot of excitement for Burks, whether no matter what you thought of his rookie season, was he was very clearly the number one option for the team, and it just like you expect a lot of volume to be headed his way because of that. Uh, now it's hard to see as much volume going to him. Before the signing, I had him as a mid-range wide receiver three, thinking, you know, there's a lot of upside there, but there's plenty of floor. You know, the, the, the floor, or I should say the floor is plenty low, is what I'm trying to say. Um, now, slight decrease to a low-end wide receiver three. I didn't de decrease him too much because I think there is a chance that the offense just being overall better with DeAndre Hopkins being there can be a good thing for Traylon Burks on a per target basis. I think, you know, facing the second quarterback on the defense or, you know, not being the main focus of the defense can help him be more efficient on the targets he does get. It's just that his targets, I believe, will be coming down from what I had previously projected him at. So it is a slight, you know, knock for Traylon Burks. Moving on to Chica Conquo. Uh, last year as a rookie, just like Traylon Burks, uh, flashed in some of the opportunities he got. His problem was that, you know, uh, he didn't really do much in the beginning of the season, kind of worked up 
towards the end of the season. He was a fourth round rookie tight end. You don't expect much from rookie tight ends, let alone fourth round rookie tight ends. It was great that he did show some flashes. He had some startable weeks towards the end of the season, but it's important to note that he only played over 50% of the snaps twice last year. Uh, so we really need that to increase coming into this year. And, and, there was reason to really like Chick Conquo coming this year. Same kind of thing with Jalen Burks, where he was the clear second option in the passing game, and you expected a lot of volume to go his way. For tight ends, for us to really care about them in fantasy, they need one or all of the things going their way, and that's being at least the second or first option in the passing attack on their team to get 90 or more targets or you know, 8 to 10 touchdowns. And that's that's basically we have to have that for them to actually matter for us in in fantasy for them to have difference making points. Um, it's hard to think that any of that is possible now. Again, like Traylon Burks, this could make him better on a per target basis because there's less focus on him. But I really think he is now the third passing option in the offense. I fully expect Traylon Burks to command more of a target share. I think he is the better player overall. Also has the first round draft capital. The team is more invested in him. So I think that you know he's for going to get the opportunity to prove himself first before Chig when it comes down to it. I had Chig as a fringe tight end win before this. Now it's a mid to low end tight end tune. It's just hard to see a world in which I'd feel confident starting Chica Conquo in my lineups on a week-to-week basis. Now, maybe in best ball, that's a little bit different. Same for Traylon Burks, honestly, is that if you don't have to actually put him in your lineup um, and you can just get some of the spike week games that may happen, especially for Chig, because touchdowns uh, is basically all you need for a spike week at tight end. Uh, I'm more interested there. But in in lineup leagues where you have to actually put him in your lineup, uh, I'm really not excited about Chica Conquo. Uh, Ryan Tannehill. I think this is really good for Ryan Tannehill because there was reason to believe that he would not play the whole season. The Titans don't look like a very good team. Now, Mike Vrabel has always had that team kind of play above what they look like on paper. So you expect them to still be kind of competitive. But with them drafting Will Levis, if the Titans were just like solidly out of the playoff hunt, it made sense that Will Levis would get starts this year. At this point, I think it's safe to say that unless the Titans are, you know, it's week 15, 16, 17, 18, uh, and they're still in the race, like Tannehill's going to be playing. It's going to take them being knocked out of the playoff hunt for Will Levis to start. And I think it's going to be harder for them to get knocked out of the playoff hunt now with DeAndre Hopkins because I think he he lifts the overall uh, play of the offense and how good it can be. So this makes Ryan Tannehill, you know, kind of viable. Now, only viable in the way that he's a solid QB2 option and a QB2 worth drafting in best ball. Whereas before I had him as, I'm only really drafting Ryan Tannehill when I'm drafting three QBs in my on my best ball teams, and that was the only spot where I was considering him. Now I think, you know, uh, well, obviously in super flex leagues, he should be drafted, but in those super flex leagues, Now he's closer to being an actual QB2. You could maybe consider your your actual QB2 QB2 you plan on playing each week. I think that's a real possibility now where that was not the case before Uh, in really deep leagues uh, where you might draft a QB2. He's a viable option. And again, in best ball, uh, is just an actual QB2 option for your teams. Finally, Derrick Henry, um, a slight bump up for him. I was already kind of in on Derrick Henry this year. RB seven ish um, so far this year. I think this is like a slight bump up for his value just because, as I mentioned with Ryan Tannehill, DeAndre Hopkins should make the offense better. They should be able to move the ball better, get in the red zone more often, could possibly give Derrick Henry more opportunities to score a touchdown. Like I said, I was already pretty high on Derrick Henry, all things considered. So it's not a big move for me, but I, I do want to note that it is a positive for Derrick Henry. Um, if you have any questions or comments about what I think about you know, the Titans, want further explanation, have a disagreement, please let me know in the comments. Let's talk about it. Or you can jump into our Discord, our free Discord. The link to that will be in the description of this video. As I mentioned multiple times in this video, I've talked about these players in best ball. If you want to play best ball, the best place to do it is on Underdog Fantasy, our sponsor. If you sign up with code JWB, you get a first-time deposit match 
up to a hundred dollars while you're here like subscribe follow all those things you can find me on twitter at yb underscore ff you can find jwb on twitter at jwb underscore ff i'll see you next time